let's put you through a test, shall we? This is a test I have shown to my fellow programmers, all of which have failed spectacularly. Hopefully you're different. I'm gonna show you an image and you have to tell me what are the top five values in this image? Go. If you chose these cells, one, two, maybe three, four, five, you're wrong. And you probably also realize that the colors don't actually match the numbers. The real answer, if I colored it correctly, is this. You can see very clearly, these are the highest figures. One, two, three, four, five, and even this one you can say is part of it. So why did I trick you? Well, let me explain. You see, in data visualization, it's really important to distinguish between simply just using colors for the sake of colors and actually building things with the right best practices when it comes to data visualization. This is the mistake I see in the industry every single day when people are just making kind of random decisions when it comes to their visualizations. No, there's an actual practice when it comes to visualizations. So let's have a look at what those principles or those best practices actually are. You see, when most analysts build visualizations, unfortunately, they focus on number four, which is the weakest way to actually transmit information. Well, why is that? If you think back hundreds of thousands of years ago, there were no spreadsheets, there were no tables, there was no writing. The only thing that our brains were kind of sensitive to was movement, changes in color, uh, color that differentiates from the background movement, um, a tiger coming at you, all those kinds of things. And in modern visualization, we've forgotten all of that. So the goal with data visualization is to use what the brain is already sensitive to, which is the other four items on this list. Here's an example of one such dashboard. As you can see, there's no use of color. There's nothing to suggest insight. So it's up to the reader to actually interpret the results that is the job of the analyst. The job of the analyst is take the information and then make it readable or insightful for the reader. That's the whole relationship between us developers and our stakeholders. Going back to our list of best practice elements, you can see that text is number four on our list. And these aren't necessarily ranked in any particular order, but I will say text is the weakest form of data visualization. That's because our brains aren't actually built to read text as efficiently as size, distance, orientation, and specifically color. Color is a big one. We are so used to judging things by color that if you go back to our original test, most of you, if not all of you, your natural tendency will be to read the values based on their color. Now, if I never said this was a test, you'd probably just do that naturally. But because I said it was a test, you probably had to fight that urge to figure out, well, you know, what's the riddle, what's the puzzle here, or what's the trick that you're actually trying to do to us, Jen? As my last piece of advice for data visualization, pay very close attention to everything but the text. The text is sort of like an afterthought that you can add in, but it shouldn't be the priority or the main way that you communicate information using bar charts, line charts, pie charts, tree maps, there's all sorts of different options that can, you can use to actually emphasize or transmit the information or the message you're trying to give to the stakeholder. The text is actually added work for them. So try and avoid text if you can. Now, if you guys want to learn more about data visualization, but more specifically, how do you bring together Tableau analytics, visualization, visualization best practices, working with stakeholders, and then succeeding in the industry as an analyst, then you want to check out my website on Jellyman Education. The link is in the description below. Until next time, guys, thank you for watching and see ya.